In this video, we're going to take a look at using soft pastels to create a representational eye. I'm going to be using my Rembrandt soft pastels here, and here's a look at the case that the Rembrandt pastels come in. They are a bit pricey, but they are well worth the price. You can see it's a hard shell case here, and uh, it's got a little bit of foam there to protect the pastels. And they each have their own little slot here, and it comes with some half pastels, as you can see here, and some full pastels as well. We're going to be working on Canson Mitant's paper here, and I've got a warm gray tone that I'm going to be working on. I'm also working on the textured side of the paper, so the texture is going to play a little bit of a role in the drawing. I'm going to begin by just laying out the basic shapes that I see here with... Uh, a flesh tone color and you can do this with a pastel pencil if you prefer uh, you want to stick stay away from graphite probably here because you don't want the graphite to mix with the pastel so we're gonna do all of the drawing here with pastel I'm gonna draw pretty loose here try to keep uh, my shoulder moving and kinda of keep my wrist locked as much as possible now that I've got the initial contours of the shape of the eye developed, I can go ahead and uh, start to lay in the shape of the iris. And for most people's eyes, the iris is going to be overlapped by the top eyelid and the bottom part of the eye as well. So that's something to keep in mind as you're planning out the shape of the iris. I'm going to bring that dark brown or that burnt umber around the edges and make uh, the contrast with the contour lines that I drew just a little bit stronger. I may here and there start to establish some of the shadows that I see in my photo reference as well. I'm going to be very loose here in the beginning stages and as we layer more colors on top of our initial drawing we can get, become a little bit more tighter with our applications. But here you want to be loose. All right, looking at the eye here, uh, the eye that I'm working from here has a uh, blue-green uh, coloring in the iris. So I'm going to start with uh, a, a kind of a deep green and uh, layer that on top of the dark brown that I've already put down. And then a lighter blue-green is layered on top. And then a yellow-green closer to the center. A lot of people who are new to using pastels will only put on a few layers and then they'll stop and wonder why their finished drawing doesn't look developed. And that's because you've got to put on many layers a lot of times, especially when you're dealing with something that's complex like the human eye. Let me use a little bit of dark blue here as well. And uh, again, I'm gonna put another application of that super dark brown here. This is not black. Some of the darker areas that it exist around the edges of the iris, we'll go ahead and put those in and pull those lines on top. Periodically, I am using my finger to smudge. A little later in the demonstration, we'll pull out a blending stump. Now, the dark brown that I applied previously is just a little too warm for my liking, so I'm going to use a dark blue and go over those areas, and that will cool down the color temperature without compromising the value. As more and more colors are layered on the surface, less and less will we need to rely on smudging. Instead, the colors as we apply them will naturally mix, much like a painting. Now I'm going to begin to pull out some of the highlighted areas in the eye. I'm going to use the edge of the pastel to create some more defined lines here. And uh, we're going to use that blue-green, that very light blue-green that we used earlier on. There's also a few areas of observed yellow that are happening in the eye. So I'm going to make marks that are similar to the ones that I just made with the blue-green, kind of pulling them out from the center. And even a lighter blue is used here. And this is going to be the point where the eye starts to really come together, so to speak, where it can start to put some of the intricate details that are that are observed in the photo reference. And to make those marks stand out a little bit more, I'm gonna use that dark brown again and work a few lines in between those marks that I just made just to increase the contrast. It'll make those areas a bit more noticeable and a little bit more like a realistic eye. There are a couple areas where yellow ochre is observed, so I'll apply those marks. And again, we'll go back with that light blue and pull out some of the highlighted areas. Now, the eye is wet, 
So it's going to have some highly reflective areas. To create that illusion, we're going to use a cream color initially. We'll make the pupil in the center a little bit darker. This time we're using a black. And I'll use my blending stump to work that in. And we can go ahead and pull some of that black around the edge here, just darken up some of those shadows. If you used black by itself without creating any colors underneath or without having any colors underneath, it's going to appear a little bit flat. So that's, where, that's why when you use a black, you should probably have some colors underneath or plan to put some colors on top of it just so it looks a bit more natural. Now I'm also going to work these areas in with the blending stump. Of course I'm using the blending stump here because it's going to give me the ability to make more precise marks with the blending stump instead of using my finger. And I'm going to use a bit of green here on top of the black so it just doesn't look so strong. So the black is not overpowering here. Again with the cream to bring out some more of those highlights. Again, make the eye look like it's wet and highly reflective. Now on the upper portion of the iris, there is uh, a few shadows that are cast by the eyelashes. Now we haven't got to those areas yet, but that's why it's a little bit darker at the top, and that's why there's kind of some finger marks that go down. Now in between those shadowed areas, there are highly reflective areas. So I'm trying to work in between those finger-like shapes that drop down to add those highly reflective areas. We'll bring the white over into the white part of the eye. The white part of the eye seldomly is actually white, so that's why we're going to establish that light light cream color first. Around the edges, it does start to turn to a, a pinker color. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use a red-orange, which is close to what's observed in the photo reference. And we'll bring that color into some other areas around the outside part of the eye just to make sure that we're creating a little bit of harmony there. We can work that red into the surface using the cream right on top. You see how that just mixes nicely. Now to cool up some of the highlights that actually happen in the white part of the eye, I'm going to use a very, very light blue for that. Now we can use a dark brown and establish the edges just a bit and use our blending stop to work that in so the shadows feel a little bit more natural. After another red has been applied, we'll use a little bit of blue to create more of a shadow in the corner in that dark brown again at the bottom portion of the eye. Now remember the eyeball is a sphere so we should make sure it looks like a sphere um, and adding this bit of value around the edges is going to help create that illusion. Now right on the edge of the iris where it meets the white part of the eye it's not a strong contrast there that happens, not a defined line so we'll use the blending stump to kind of smooth out that transition so it's a little bit more natural looking, a little bit more realistic. There's a lot more shadow that's happening over on the left corner of the eye, so we'll use that dark brown there, work it in with the blending stop. A few more areas of shadow right underneath the top eyelid. And now we're going to break out the white. This is actually pure white, and we're going to create those highlights that happen in the white part of the eye. Of course, there are some strong highlights on the iris part of the eye as well, so we'll be working those areas in as well. The inside corners of the eye are wet too, so some strong highlights are added there. And now we can kind of turn our attention to the outside portion of the eye, the, the areas of skin tone that happen around the outside. And we'll begin with that original flesh tone that we put down. 
and then we're going to work in a variety of different reds and pinks and yellows to make the skin tone around the outside feel more natural. And what I'm doing here is I just, as I'm observing different areas of value or different colors, I'm just adding those to the drawing, kind of working outward from where we started in the center portion of the iris. As we work, you can tell we, we get a bit more delicate with our marks, a bit more delicate with our applications. In the beginning stages, we were loose, and as we worked, we get more tight and more defined with our marks. So as we're working the outside portion of the eye, we can again be loose. This is a different area, and we're going to build up the layers of application. And as we get more defined and more layers are, are applied to the surface, we can become a little bit more precise with our marks. a bit of yellow here on the corner of the eye and we'll also put that on the inside corner as well. When I'm working with pastels I like to take the colors that I've used at one point in the painting and uh, lay them out so that I kind of have a palette in front of me so I'm using the same colors that will create harmony and unity in your paintings as well if you decide to do that. I've always found that pastel paintings are a little bit more interesting if you can have some areas where you've worked the pastel into the surface by smearing it in, but also some areas where you've just laid the pastel on the surface without working it in at all. Um, having that bit of variety makes your pastel painting a lot more interesting. Now, I often get a lot of questions from uh, students on what, what colors I choose and why I choose to use those colors for particular areas. And I think a lot of times students want to get a very clear and precise answer like there's a formula. And a lot of times there's just not a formula. It's a matter of seeing a color in your reference or in your subject and just grabbing that color and putting it on the surface. And you almost have to take the risk to put that color down. And if it's not quite right, then you find a solution for that in, in the painting. You, you make adjustments as you go, and that's part of the art process is just finding problems and finding solutions to those problems. And everybody's going to find a little bit of a different solution to those problems, and that's what makes us all unique as artists. Now I've got uh, somewhat of an established area around the eye, so I'm going to go ahead and start to put some of the eyelashes in. And for the eyelashes, I'm going to switch to a pastel pencil, and I am using a black pastel pencil for this. It's got a very sharpened tip, and I'm going to make little check marks almost. I'm going to go down and up. We're going to be very deliberate and delicate with these marks. Um, we want to make sure that they're accurate before we put them on the surface. So I'm going to verify every mark that I make before I make it with my photo reference or my subject. Also, the eyelashes kind of come off the edge of the eyelid. You can see there's a little bit of space there that happens between the actual eyeball and the flap of skin that hangs over the top. Be sure that you leave that amount of space. That'll add to the realism. Also, make sure that your lines are curved and not straight and, and too stiff. The eyelashes should be organic, just like the other parts of the body. Now, your eyelashes on the bottom part of the eye, they're going to be a lot shorter and a little bit more sparse. So there's going to be more space between them. And on the bottom part of the eyelid, you can really see that space that happens away from the eyeball, that little piece of skin or the thickness of the skin that happens there. Again, these are going to be almost upside down check marks that you make. I'm going to use that pastel pencil to just darken up the middle portion of the pupil and add just a few more areas of highlight here and there, maybe in the corner of the eye and a little bit of information about the texture of the skin. Since this drawing is just about the eye, we're not going to work too far out from the center portion of the eye, but there are a few areas of highlight that are happening, and we can add those just to give a little indication of the texture of the skin. And 
And there's a quick look at drawing an eye with soft pastels. I hope this tutorial has helped you out and wish you the best of luck in your own drawings.